So I've been freelancing for quite a while now. And to be honest, I don't really have mentors or people to surround me to actually teach me about freelancing, like, you know, how the business side works and how to deal with clients, all, all the different stuff. I just kind of jumped into it, like, with a blind eye. And if I could make a video explaining to myself years back about how freelancing worked, this would be the video. So here it is. Here are seven things that every freelancer should know. Actually, the better title would be, here are seven things that I wish I learned when I started out freelancing, but it's too long. So anyways, let's, let's jump into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Troy and today let's talk about freelancing. I have around seven plus years of experience and seven years may not seem like a long time, but I definitely learned a lot of stuff. I was able to turn my passion into a business. It really starts off as a passion, you know, you have a passion to create things, to create content, and then suddenly you find yourself making money out of it. And just to put further context, I'm actually a computer science student. So imagine a computer science student getting to film and photography and multimedia arts. It's kind of a weird mix, but I guess that's just my life. And really this advice is for people who are maybe students or maybe you're just starting out with freelancing or maybe you are freelancing and you don't really know what's going on with the freelancing gigs and all. So don't worry, we're all in the same boat. We're all here to learn from each other and share ideas. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the first point. And the first point is having an online footprint. Having an online footprint is kind of like having a digital representation of yourself. Because again, people, we are in the digital age. And that means everything is online. Truth is, no one really uses calling cards anymore unless you still have those paper calling cards that give out or you're just kind of old school. But generally, people are more on their smartphones. And that means it's better to have some sort of digital calling card. And one crucial way to create a digital footprint is by using a QR code. Like all you gotta do is show your QR code to your client or maybe someone that wants to hire you or get you for a project and they scan it and they got everything. And obviously being on social media can help you network easily because you don't have to physically be there to meet the person. And here's actually my a QR code, let me zoom in here. Oops, there we go. So pretty much, if you scan this right now, you're gonna be able to access all my social media handles right from this QR code. So this is my uh, my portfolio. So if you scan this, you're actually gonna visit my website, which is transit.com, you should visit it. Uh, these are just really convenient ways to like connect with people rather than having to give a calling card. So you can use your Instagram, your Facebook, your YouTube, uh, Vimeo, or whatever social media platform you use as a freelancer. Now on a side note, I would recommend having a LinkedIn account. I would say it's more of a quote unquote professional profile that showcases all your works, your education, your background. Maybe your client wants to do some background checks on you. So you're gonna check where you studied or what you do, what your accomplishments are in. Okay, number two, let's talk about connection over talent. My mentor once said, your talent is only as good as your connections. Meaning, if you don't have the proper network, your talent is pretty much useless. Like even if you had all the talent in the world and no one knows that you exist, you're not gonna get anywhere. And sometimes this network can just be your family or your friends or people close to you. Because let's face it, it's sometimes hard to get your network outside either your friends or family. You're usually gonna get a referral from someone who's close to you or at least acquainted to you. And again, having a QR code on the fly is what makes it possible to connect. So I would recommend getting a QR code or some sort of calling card. Okay, number three dealing with clients. And being a freelancer also means having to deal with customer service. And yes, not only are you the talent and the business person and the marketing person, you're also part of the customer service. And this is a crucial part of being a freelancer because it really is your name. You are dealing with the client face to face. It is about understanding the need of the client. Most of the time, your client might not even know what they want. So you really got to draw out the answers from them by asking questions. Questions that can help out make them understand what they want. And your job is to gather information and create the proposal. And sometimes it's about respecting the client's wants. So let's say you create a really nice project for them and you love the project. And suddenly your client doesn't like it. They're like, this is too ugly or this is not my style. Even if you think it's right, you still need to respect the client's decision because client is always right and after all this is for them not for you in relation to dealing with clients is also being transparent with the client we're talking about contracts down payments project proposals and requirements that need to be documented so when it comes to creating projects uh, contracts and proposals keep it short keep it simple and document what you think is needed first to make sure to be straightforward and as polite as possible if you got to tell them that you need to charge them charge them time is limited for the freelancer 
and we don't have like 99 hours in a day. We don't have 25 hours a day. Manage expectations. The key point is to under promise and over deliver. What you want to do is give your client a realistic date, perhaps a deadline. And then when the time comes, you want to give like something they never expected, something way better because for them, what you gave them was just an expectation. So your job now is to go the extra mile and give the best. Come on, we're all about excellence here. Okay, number four, explore and master your craft. Explore the different technical aspects of your field. You may be a programmer, you may be an artist, a musician. Your job isn't fixed to that. There is so much to explore within that realm. Ask yourself, what else could I be learning that's related to this field? Let's say you're into filmmaking. So obviously you gotta learn about lighting, audio, camera techniques, color grading, video editing. That's what I love about freelancing. It's just an endless road of learning. I pretty much dedicate two to three hours learning new things in Skillshare at least every day. And I build on that and learn new stuff. Truth is, the only way you're gonna get better is to practice, and that's by repetition. As a freelancer, you also gotta keep up with the latest technologies and trends and updates. There are important things that you can learn about your industry and it may affect you in some way. Okay, number five, freelance economics. This is about knowing your market. Do you prefer to have less high value gigs or more lower value gigs? I personally prefer the high value gigs because I rather do other stuff on the side, but that kind of changes throughout my seasons. And not to mention, pricing will determine your niche. Who are you doing it for? Are you doing for the upper class market, the middle class or the lower class? And as a freelancer, you need to keep tabs on your expenses and your income, your freelance taxes, your expenses, your earnings. And don't be afraid to take note of the things you learned in each gig. There are plenty of lessons out there which you can learn about financial advice and how to manage your funds. And okay, number six, collaborate with other freelancers. So in relation to the second point, your network is very, very important. The great part about the freelancer community is that we're all in this together. So help each other get referrals, help each other get gigs and build communities. Don't be afraid to reach out to other freelancers or ask them for help because they will probably help you. They won't bite. Okay, this is the most important point. This is the last one actually. It's understanding your biggest asset, which is you. Yes, you, the freelancer. You are the most important asset in your freelancing career. You are your own boss. You own your time. Resources are limited and what you get is what you got. So you gotta make the most out of it. And that's where being creative comes in. Humans are creative. We can take a canvas and some paint and create the most beautiful artwork. And those are just two tools. Value your health. Exercise more, sleep earlier, eat healthier. Your body is important. And it is the tool that helps you get things done. So respect it. And this may be common sense, but it's often overlooked. Is learn to take breaks and rest because your body needs it. Your body needs to recover. Get your good seven to eight hours of sleep and you'll be a happy person. Value proper work ethics. Clients will bug you late at night if you make them think that you're available 24 seven. Set the boundaries. Don't let them take advantage. You can tell your client that you don't work on weekends or maybe you only work after lunch and just be transparent about it because if you don't, you're probably gonna get like DMs late at night, maybe 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. And the truth is your health is going to be affected. You are in control of your life, your schedule and work. Get a mentor. Find someone who has years of experience in the field. Someone who's been through all the hard stuff already and someone who's knowledgeable in the craft. And most important of all, find someone who's a good teacher because you can find someone who's really good at their craft but can't really teach it that well. So when you have a mentor, ask them everything that you wanna ask because I'm pretty sure they've gone through it and it will be very helpful to you. Or join a community and find more people who are just like you in your field and you can go a long way. Okay, so that was some things that I wish I learned. But of course, the list go on and I'm pretty sure there's a thousand things I missed and could have been in the video. But you know, maybe for another time, these are just important points that every freelancer should know right off the bat. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me create more content like this because you know, I love making content and this is just a passion thing. So if you guys like the video, I'll see you in the next one. All right, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.